What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about the Musgrave Texture Node and how you can use it in order to create procedural textures inside of Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the Musgrave Texture Node is a node inside of Blender that basically uh, generates a kind of noise. And so it's very similar to the Noise Texture Mode, but this one's gonna give you more control over the way the octaves are combined. I'm not 100% sure what the octaves are in this case, but what it does is it gives you more control over over the uh, noise that's created and a slightly different result. So let's go ahead and take a look at it inside of Blender. All right, so we're in shading mode and I've got a principled BSDF material. So I just added a new material with a principled BSDF shader in here. But what we wanna do is we wanna start by adding a Musgrave texture note. So I'm just gonna do a shift A we're gonna search for Musgrave Texture, and we're gonna click right here. And so what we can do is we can take that and we can drag a value out of the height into our base color inside of our principal BSDF shader. All right, so first off, there's a drop down in here that's gonna allow you to adjust the different uh, inputs or the dimensions that it's evaluating the noise in. Um, you're pretty much always going to start with at least 2D. So this is basically going to adjust the vector values that this is using in order to calculate the noise result that's being shown on your surface. So second off, you've got a drop down that allows you to select different kinds of Musgrave textures. So you can see how each one of these is going to generate a different result because it's going to use a different algorithm in order to generate this. And so you're really gonna to wanna to play around with these different drop down values because they all kind of do a little bit of a different thing, but there's also some real similarities. So the FBM is the one that we've been using. It just gives you this kind of like typical um, typical result. Um, it's kind of adding different values together in order to get to that. Um, the multi-fractal is gonna give you a little bit more of an uneven result, um, which is gonna be a little bit closer to like terrain and real life, other things like that. You might sharpen this up with a color ramp node or something like that um, in order to really get that um in, in order to really get the uh, contrast in here if you wanted to use that for displacement or something like that so the hybrid multifractal and the hetero terrain um, give me fairly similar results um, notice how with this one for example i'm getting a little bit more uh, pronounced detail in here where on the other one i'm getting a little bit more of a noise function in here though that may be a factor of the actual values that i'm placing in here and then this one is really interesting the ridged multifractal um, that one's going to create like sharp peaks in here and then you can do some really interesting things with uh, adjusting like the lacunarity so if you want this to be like lighter then you can put this to a value of zero um, and then notice how if i adjust this the other way then i'm starting to get more of like a uh i'm, I'm starting to get more of a kind of like blurry result with the lines being dark but if you set this like this and then we're going to adjust that detail value down but notice how you can get that really pronounced result by dragging that detail down and adjusting that lacking area to zero so really interesting um, you could use this to create like uh, different veins in granite or something like that all right and so then down below you've got options for things like your scale which is going to adjust how large or small this effect is on here you've also got your detail in here, which is going to adjust um, the higher the value is, the more pronounced the difference is going to be between your noise that's being created and the lighter areas. So notice how if I drag this to the left, I'm getting more of like a, like kind of a fuzzy transition on that side. The more I drag it to the right, um, the more pronounced that difference is going to be. So we'll talk about dim dimension after we talk about this last value, the lacunarity. Um, hopefully I said that right. So the lacunarity is going to basically give you a difference between the scale of the different curves that it's generating. Um, basically what that means is the higher values are going to give you um, a different kind of interaction around the edges. So notice how if you set that to one, these are very smooth, but if you set that to something like five, you start getting this kind of like, I don't want to say warble, but maybe that's a good word for that. Um, basically, it's just kind of a, you're getting more curve around the outside. And once you do that, then this dimension value is going to give you a lot of control over how uh, fine that result is. So notice how if I make that dimension value smaller versus larger, you're just getting more detail in here. So you're going to want to play around a little bit with the relationship between these last two, because they're really going to affect each other when you you do this so notice how if I make this a little bit bigger like this and then kind of adjust this dimension a little bit more I could get something that might pass as like a marble material or something like that um, with the difference between the different colors but you're just gonna want to kind of play with these values in order to get the results that you like and so there's a lot of interesting things you can do with this like for example if you jump this over to multi fractal and you set your lacunarity to under one like this 
and we're going to go ahead and we're going to adjust our scale a little bit and our detail up but notice how if you start turning your dimension up, you start getting these crazy like fractal lines that are applied across your surface. And then you can adjust how those show up by adjusting your detail, right? So if you turn your detail up, um, and I'm hitting like 15 or something like that, but then you start getting this like crazy fractal line drawing surface in here. So that's an interesting result that mathematically I have no idea how it's happening, but it is definitely happening. Um, I don't know that you're necessarily gonna use that as much, but one thing that you can do is let's say that we were to add a sphere, so like a UV sphere, we'll just move this over here, and we'll just create a new material, and I'm just gonna add a Musgrave texture. But in this case, we've got our height, and we're gonna drag it into our base color, but then if you take this and instead of dragging it into your base color like this, and I'm gonna go ahead and shade it smooth, um, if you were to drag that into like a color ramp node, then uh, things start getting really interesting. So if I add a color, ramp node right here, you can start dictating those colors a lot better. So notice how now I can kind of dictate, um, I can kind of dictate the transition between the different colors using these sliders. So notice how I can use this in order to set this to be kind of a, uh, I, I can use this in order to set this to be almost like a marble material. Notice how like the more detail you add in here, for example. So if I take my uh, dimension and I drag it down a little bit and I adjust my scale, notice how you're getting this kind of like procedural material in here. And then you could also adjust the colors. So if I was to click on this, for example, and let's go ahead and drag this up, you could set this so that you get a transition from like a blue material to like a red material or something like that. So you can adjust the colors that are in here using this color ramp node. And again, um, you can just use this in order to control the strength of the transitions between the two. And then just one other thing to remember is remember that you can add a, uh, you can add a mapping node as well as a texture coordinate node. Drag your generated into your vector and then your vector into your vector here. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to adjust the location of where this is on your object, as well as like your rotation or your scale. So you can adjust that using your typical mapping node as well but lots of interesting things you can do with this a lot of the time what i've seen is i've seen people using this to add additional noise to different surfaces like something with the brick texture node for example or something like that you can plug this into those nodes in order to add kind of variations to your materials inside of blender all right so that's kind of an overview of what the musgrave texture node does let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below i will link to some other texture node tutorials on this page as well but as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.